particular bug, like right in my ear. I was just about to start. And this thing was like, Whizz! it's crazy. Thank you for auditing Professor Sky's record review, where I'm going to be recording in my son's room. Is, that, is the bug right there? If you see the bug, let me know in the comments. Um, so I'm going to be uh, doing kind of a different video. Uh, there's some work being done in my basement, so my house is way too loud right now, and I have to sacrifice quality of light for quality of sound. But in general on YouTube, people prefer uh, to hear better than they do to see better. So I'm going to be reviewing the album Nusin by Voodoo Game. And this was actually suggested to me by one of my viewers, Nico... J'ai oublié votre nom de famille. Uh, who just said that I might like this album and find it interesting, and indeed I did. This is the album that you should listen to if you have the following feelings. You're happy, it's summer, and it's sunny outside. I think extra points go to if you're with somebody that you care about. See, I listened to this album for the first time while driving to the uh, uh, Asian superfood market here in Rochester to get some nice food with my wife and like the sun was shining and, and I had my little like you know my little moon roof and I opened it up so I could let the light into the car and I was driving to this upbeat summer fun funk light and enjoyable music very fun very enjoyable I highly recommend it the thing about it though is you know what am I going to do to describe it you know what more can I say other than boy this is some nice light funk music well, I would actually go to how they describe themselves. If you go to their Facebook page, they describe themselves as, quote, voodoo funk from Lyon slash Togo. So let's just break down each of those elements. Before I get into the music in specific, let's just break down each of those elements. First of all, we have voodoo, which is spelled many different ways. In English, it's usually spelled V-O-O-D-O-O. -O -O. Uh, in the French-speaking world, it's usually spelled like this, V-A-U-D-O-U. -O -O. It doesn't really matter. The main thing to know, and what I think is important, and what a lot of people forget, is that voodoo is not some funny thing. It is not something that people do because they are evil. It is a religion, and it should be treated and as equally valid as Christianity or Islam. I mean, it's a lot like Christianity and Islam, except the body count is a lot lower. <laughs> people don't kill in the name of voodoo. Uh, it started in the sort of Togo-Benin region uh, of West Africa, but it reached the New World thanks to the horrible practice of slavery. And over time, it's changed in kind of the same way that like the English language is different uh, in England as it is in America. Uh, I think we could say that a lot of these West African religious traditions have changed. So it's interesting because we just use the term in English and in many other languages as just a shorthand for dark and evil. And, uh, you know, we live in a culture where, where we pay attention to language and we have things like the R word, which we can no longer say, which we used to be able to say in the past. And I would say we might want to move towards the V word for using voodoo as an adjective meaning weird, bizarre, or spooky. It is just a religion, and that's the way that we need to treat it. Now, it's just a religion, but it's been demonized for hundreds of years. Why is it? Hmm. Why is this religion that developed somewhere by people of a certain skin color, why has that been demonized for hundreds of years? It's no real mystery. It's a holdover of colonialism and of racism. So knock it off with using voodoo as a funny way. So that's a little speech. I also give that speech whenever I talk about music from Haiti as well. Uh, it's very different. You know, like the whole, the whole system is f roughly similar with sort of um, sometimes animalistic, sometimes very earth-centered, uh, sort of a central god, um, and then different divinities underneath. That seems to be the, the primary linking between uh, all forms of voodoo. Uh, but in all cases, uh, I think we just have to understand that in order to value West Africa, which is a place which deserves as much respect as anywhere else in the world, we also have to value voodoo. According to official statements, you know, in, in Togo, around 17% of people are considered to be voodoo adherents. But for the rest, there's a question of syncretism. And that's where you mix together voodoo and Christianity, or voodoo and Islam. It's sort of all together in one. And this is the thing, you know. Oh, is it superstitious? Well, all faiths, all beliefs that are not based on empirical data are superstitions. All of them, just by definition. 
I happen to identify as Christian, but I also happen to understand that that is a form of superstition no different than that of believing in the I Ching or believing in some kind of divinity of water, okay? Now, there isn't a lot of voodoo in this album, as far as I can tell. Uh, I suppose the name and the mask, and we'll get into that. Let's get into the next part. So it's Voodoo Funk from Lyon and Togo. The funk is the primary aspect of this album. I read a little article that said that this is a little bit different than their previous work. And I say they, but it's mainly he. Someone named Peter Solo is the primary songwriter and composer of the, of the album. And he's, um, apparently he had a band before, and this is a new band, and they replaced horns with synthesizers and that definitely is felt out through here it is very much funk it is very much disco at times it is very much rock and roll it's all just based on grooves on finding a good groove and extending that groove out at times i would say it's overly simplistic you know just like a single a section and no b section or anything else like that but still it's a, it's just a great fun funk album then we get to the concept of from Lyon slash Togo. I don't know how well you know geography, but Lyon uh, is a city in France, and Togo is a country in West Africa. <laughs> so how are these things connected? Well, first of all, Togo, if you don't know, is was a part of the kingdom of Dahomey. It was part of what was once called the Slave Coast. Just so you know, again, let's just go back to history, okay? This isn't critical race theory, it's history. There was a place in the world where on maps, it would just say the Slave Coast. And everybody saw it and everybody just said, okay. And this is, one second, my camera's way too high. I've just, I've just never recorded right here. Is that bug on? I feel like that bug is on me. Is this creating tension for you in the audience with the bugs? So, um, you know, it, uh, it's interesting because it's been, uh, Togo, this whole area, this whole slave coast, because of that, has a huge exportation of human beings to the Americas. And in particular, in North America, many of the slaves, and potentially most of the slaves, come from this area, Togo and Benin. So it's weird, you know, I teach. How many students have I had who are of Irish descent? Well, I can look at their name and tell. Italian descent, I can look at their name and tell. How many have I taught who are of Togolese descent? I have no idea, but the answer is probably close to 100. <laughs> Yet, probably zero of those would be able to say, I am from Togo. Again, it's part of the historical erasure. It's not critical race theory. It's history. Uh, I'm not going to trademark that, but I'd like you to use that. <laughs> if, if anyone ever starts attacking critical race theory, that's a better way uh, to refer to it. There is a, the French language spoken in Togo. It was, I guess, partly owned by... Germany and Portugal and the whole history of Africa is just different forces coming in and trying to take over. Uh, there's over 40 ethnic groups, one of which is called the Mina, and that is a group which, uh, which Peter uh, Solo is a member of. That is the language that he speaks. It is a minority language, even in Togo, and it's fascinating because it is often very associated with the voodoo practice itself. According to world organizations, Togo is considered partly free, <laughs> and one of the unhappiest places on earth. That's where things get interesting because this music is not unhappy, it is extremely happy, it is extremely light, it is extremely cheery. I don't know why. It's interesting because the history of Africa is so often told as a miserable history filled with anger and hatred, yet so much of the music is capable of eliciting such happiness. When I think about the term Afro-funk or Afro-rock, the first thing I think of is a brightness, sort of brightness and a lightness. And I don't know, maybe that's to combat the misery, or maybe that's just because fun music is fun to play. Whatever it is, Peter Solo now lives in Lyon, a beautiful city in France, a city I don't know particularly well. Um, I, I lived in Marseille, which is close to Lyon, but I haven't spent much time in Lyon, but it's a place where they live well and they eat well. And this is where we get the sense this is actually maybe not necessarily a Togo Lay album. It's not necessarily an album of Togo. The rest of the musicians in the band are from France. This feels very much to me like a French album, like a French album by a band who is nurtured by the state to a certain extent, able to play public music festivals, of which there are many in France, able to create a sort of lively uh, crowd of sort of well-meaning people who are there to listen to fun music uh, from a different part of the world that helps them connect. 
That's all mixed up with a weird post-colonial question. You know, for over 60 years, Togo has been free of France, and yet their number one language is still French. What is the relationship between them? How happy are they? How much is France guilty of exploiting? What is it? To a certain extent, there is an erasure in the music, a happy erasure, a good erasure in the music, because it is a music of togetherness. See, it's happy in this weird room <laughs> where I'm getting attacked by bugs. There is a complete language profusion on this, which in some ways makes me, okay, so I am bilingual. My first language is English. A lot of people think I am a French professor. I'm a professor of French, small difference, um, in English and, and French. And there's a little bit of English, a lot of French, and then some Mina. But there's enough of it mixed around, and there's enough of an accent on the English, and I don't always understand when it's going in between one language or another. It's kind of funny. It's, it's an interesting experience for me to, to feel like, I get this, I, did it? Is, it, is that mispronouncing English or is that Mina? Or is that some French word that I'm not hearing in this context? For a stamp, just so you know, for every album, I give a stamp, which is a, an example song. I'm gonna put that up there, right next to Django Fett. Uh, and that's going to be the song Bella. I'm actually gonna include the video. The video is a lot of fun. If you have kids, put on this video, show them this video. It's just light and interesting. It's like a spaceship love story, kind of semi-animated, a uh, very well done video, very engaging. And the song itself is typical of the album, kind of a catchy synthesizer lead, very much a P-Funk vibe with the synthesizer here, you know, kind of that, like not, the album sort of has a James Brown feel for the most part, but a little bit of a P-Funk, even Earth, Wind and Fire style background vocals. Uh, I believe France is the country that appreciates Earth, Wind and Fire the most. My God, people in France love Earth, Wind and Fire. Uh, most of it is in the language of Mina, and if you watch the subtitles, it's all just subtitled in Mina, so that won't help you. Uh, there's one line in French, Soyez la bienvenue, be welcome. Just these great background singers, a great laid back feel. Just, you know, kind of one simple part to the whole song, although he does have multiple different voices that he's able to use. He has kind of like a clowning voice and kind of a serious voice. And there's even some kind of chanting here. And the word voodoo is used in the song. I don't know Mina well enough to know how. So potentially the part of what makes this voodoo funk, which is always the question I have to ask myself whenever anyone talks about a new genre, is what makes it new? What differentiates, the, what differentiates, what di differentiates this from regular Afro-funk, or what makes Afro-funk, Afro-funk, and not just funk. These are all complicated questions. But I believe it's the way that these chants, uh, these kind of uh, voodoo, like the style of chanting practiced in the voodoo religion is integrated into the chanting in this song. The, the, the chants they would do, they would give to the divinities. By the way, those many divinities that are underneath the primary god are called the voodoo. That's where the origin of that word comes from. So it's a great, fun song. You can tell what I'm talking about driving around. If you're driving to an Asian food market about to get a half of a duck, it's very good. Uh, I'm gonna go through the rest of the album fairly quickly. It opens up with Zoromi, kind of a funk guitar. Again, more P-Funk synthesizers, nice percussion. Come, uh, it goes between Mina and then French, and then he just says, ladies! <laughs> it's just kind of a whole party jam. My biggest problem with the whole album is that it's not always like songs. It feels like it's just one groove with no B parts. But still, you know, a lot of it has that great feeling of like when you're inside of a James Brown groove. You know that nice feeling? You often feel like you're there. Be My Wife is the next song, which is mostly in English, a little bit of a tighter groove. Um, singing in French, you know, be like this, you be like that. The lyrics sometimes feel as though they're improvised on the spot. Then we get Bella, already discussed. Tell Me, another nice jam here, interlocking lines, uh, but like the, the guitars and the drums, everything feels very like well synced and put together. Um, it's a sort of a jealousy song in English, like tell me where you've been. And there is a B section to this. So my sort of main complaint is the less, is the lack of development, but there you go. Mon, cana Mon Canapé yeah, is a great James Brown style bro uh, groove and singing all about wanting the nicest, you know, the the car of all cars and the couches of all couches. And it seems to be about greed and capitalism. Um, I really like this song a lot. And just for every one of these songs, if you listen with a, a sort of a, hmm, how accomplished is this? You're not gonna necessarily like it. But if you listen to it and what you want to hear is just like a groove, <laughs> then every song is so good. We then get to the song Lady Bobo, which is my favorite. That's my favorite song. Um, probably because my dog's name is Bobo, 
and my daughter made him a dress recently. So I just picture that image of Bobo jumping around in a dress, a very catchy chorus. He uses the subjunctive, which I like as a French professor. Qu'est-ce que tu veux que je dise? What do you want that I say? I like hearing that. Again, these different voices that he has. This one voice is kind of like, oh, it's kind of a funny one. A nice B part in this song. My, ma my main problem of this whole thing is that if you're going to have kind of James Brown grooves, you need to have at least one sort of virtuoso musician to help. You know, you need a Maceo Parker to kind of spruce things up. I didn't quite feel like there's any point where any instrumentalist was doing something spectacular, you know. Uh, Camisole is a, another nice song, kind of nice singing, he's sort of joking about what he plants, and like he plants bananas and he's going to reap a guard, some other fruit. Kind of a weird song, I don't quite get what it is. Um, but I will say that this is the first song that I realized, in a way, this band also reminds me of the B-52s. Just in the way, maybe it's the keyboard sounds that are being used, or just the party atmosphere. But if we could sort of mix together James Brown and the B-52s, we'd have a pretty good band. Tu vas regarder, uh, great guitar leads on here. Is this could be about the American election, I can't quite tell. This is where I get so confused because I don't even know if the song is in English or in French. And this happens when you're bilingual, you'll read something and halfway through you'll realize that it's in a different language than you thought you were reading. So I don't know, but I think he refers to the world needs a new prezi. I think that's what he says. But I can't tell if he's speaking Mina, English, French, or if I just misheard one of those three languages. Um, there's even a C part to this song, which is quite nice. Tu as déconné, kind of messed around, more fun, this uh, kind of vocal improv at some point, you know, kind of scat adjacent, pretty nice. Again, more of that fun B-52s vibe. And then out of nowhere, the album ends with a song called Yom, or Yome, I don't know how it's pronounced, which is an instrumental outro of amazing beauty, of quietness, of sort of suppressed horns, gentle atmospheric hiss like you hear in this whole video, because that sound from the basement is that loud. It's crazy. So yeah, I don't know. It's a beautiful outro. I sort of wish that maybe there was more of this in the rest of the album to create some kind of sense of dynamism throughout the rest. But there you go. I'm just gonna show you this cute picture. Just because I see it back there. That's, that's me and my son when he was uh, one years old, right? Isn't that a fun picture? Anyways, he doesn't look like that anymore. All right, so there's my review. I definitely suggest listening to it, downloading it, having fun listening to it, and uh, and just kind of connecting. You know, it's part of the, the value of this show is getting to interact with different cultures and different societies and trying to understand what is the music that they make and why. And hopefully I can share that with you and have you share more interest. You know, this is not, I, I this channel is not about one genre. It is not about all genres. I'm not trying to say, what country from Africa can I talk about next? The capital of Togo is Lome. No, no, that's not the point. The point is just, there's so much good music out there. So come enjoy some of it with me. Okay, I'm gonna go actually listen to some more of that music while making my daughter some cereal. Or I guess pouring her cereal. I'll make it, okay. And it, the bug never came back. So that's good. There's the camera.